make a few comments. I don't want to detain you for any longer because we had a very long but fruitful day today. Uh, many uh, insights, many new observations, and above all, I believe has been an excellent series of presentations. When I started my introduction this morning, I, I made the point that despite the advances in nutrition, one of the profound paradoxes is that the biggest holy grail remains understanding how we eat and how do you document what nutrients we consume. And I think this is going to be an important point of, of discussion, and I do hope that new technologies that will come into, f into play may give us better insights to, into understanding what we eat, how we eat, and the nutrients that we are consuming, because these are fundamental questions, whether it be for policy, for product development, or for simply understanding what nutrients we are consuming. So, uh, oh yeah. So, just to sort of uh, articulate uh, through the day, so we had a series of presentations going through from asking the question, what children eat, through to Kiran talking about eating behavior, then a whole tapestry of presentations starting with Alison, Dan Tong, Salvador on different, different countries, and Norinba ending up with our presentation on Malaysia. It seems to me, listening to all the presentation, the fundamental theme was that we need to continue the kinds of studies that we're seeing today, although they may need some refinement going forward, either with technology or with science, I do believe that trying to understand what children eat will be a significant forte to our armory of trying to innovate and to revolutionize the science of nutrition. And so, I want to spend a minute for us just to ruminate and to wrap up what we have seen today. And I think the, the point that was made was, despite the fact that we know there's enormous amount of overnutrition, both in many regions of Asia and in, 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 in places like Mexico, I really would think that you would be convinced that we need to also have a keen eye on how can we combat undernutrition and how can we provide foods that are acceptable and amenable to unique calorie densities. And I think that would be partly contributed by the innovation and technology that we're going to encompass and en engulf in our thinking. Secondly, as I said a moment ago, we genuinely need good data, quality data on intake to understand the nutrient gaps in children and diets and how best we can address these. And I think the landmark studies that you've seen today from Fitz and KNS are, are, are key examples of that. And only through this nationally representative high quality dietary approaches can we identify nutrient intake patterns and food sources of nutrients that are either problematic or can be used as a prescriptive or diagnostic paradigm to try and make good some of these deficiencies and excesses. And we have seen examples of that uh, from China, where, where Dan Tong talked about the high salt intake, saturated fat in China, combined with low intake of fiber, with Mexico giving a very, very unusual juxtaposition of how beverage consumption in particular is going through the roof and what that does in terms of energy intake and, and also looking at the deficiencies in fiber, iron, and com combination causing a risk of uh, anemia. USA, profoundly, that there are some d d lower consumption of iron and potassium, but we also saw how supplementation of, of, of micronutrients or supplementation through pills has a profound effect on their overall nutrient profile. And the Philippines, again, we talked very eloquently about the low protein intake, low fat, high sugar, and these are, I think, thematics that are recurring to happen uh, in, in all of these four, four, five countries. And of course, Malaysia, just a moment ago, uh, Norinba talked about the low vitamin C vitamin D and calcium. So it seems to me that it is imperative that we simply can't assume that even with a country as close as, for the sake of argument, Malaysia and Singapore, or between Thailand and the Philippines, that there is equal con quantity of, of concepts that we can translate and transfer from one to another. I think this is the reason why we need to continue marching on looking at data from individual countries. And and I think the last point, which I think is a very important point, as Kiran has shown very eloquently, 
that there is no nutrition without behavior. And as my late professor John Yutkin from London said, all food that is nutritious must first be eaten. And I think that's a very important point. And I think this is an important point. Uh, and on, on that note, uh, I want to firstly thank all the speakers for the excellent presentation. Thank you. All of you here to be at the last bell, asking important questions, but above all, interacting in a very intellectually discursive way. But last but not least, the organizers for this wonderful program, and especially to Celestine for her impeccable co manship Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Henry. This wraps up day two of Nestle Nutrition Institute. Nurture a healthy generation of children, research gaps, and opportunities.